Dear learners, we have discussed a lot about NGO and what the NGOs do in the rural areas and specifically in the agriculture sector. Uh, so we have decided, we have discussed uh, that NGOs, they are no voluntary organizations and they are non-governmental in nature. We have discussed their formation, we have discussed the concept of NGOs. Uh, in this session, we would be specifically concentrating on the role of NGO in rural development. Uh, it is very important to understand that why we are studying rural development per se. Uh, because uh, India is one of the countries which is uh, uh, occupied by the agriculture uh, sector. F uh, I mean the major part is being occupied by the agriculture sector. So we do have a mixed economy, but uh, the majority part of the economy is dependent on the agricultural sector. And when we talk about the agriculture, uh, we have it in mind that all the farms, all the um, farmers associated with uh, the farm producers like wheat, rice, uh, Jawar, Bajra, etc., whatever it may be, they are located in the rural bases. Now, the farmers, all the farmers, they may not be very, very affluent enough uh, to help themselves or to have certain kinds of awareness related to education of their children, etc., or the health benefits provided by the government. So in this case, the NGOs come into picture. These are the non-governmental organizations. They come into the picture and they try to help them uh, create a kind of a community, uh, create a kind of self-help group. And with the help of them uh, or the networking agencies, with the help of them, they try to provide the benefits to the rural uh, masses or the uh, development of the rural population. So we will be discussing uh, different roles of NGOs in two different concepts. And we will see how the NGOs help in rural development, specifically in a country like India. So when we talk about the rural development, what are the areas where the rural development is required? So if you see this flow chart, you will find a, a set of activities on the, or the areas on which the rural development is required. Now if you see the poverty alleviation part, we have discussed most of the part, but we are going to discuss the specific aspects of uh, role of NGO management. Now in poverty alleviation like uh, in the rural poor, the, about the rural poor, how to alleviate the poverty level or how to increase their standards of living, how to provide them the jobs, how to pro job opportunities uh, for example, uh, how to provide them certain kind of education, skill based education so they are able to work and earn for themselves and their families and slowly they uplift themselves. For this there are certain communities working uh, like self help groups which help in poverty alleviation. Another set of activities or another area which, which needs attention is the employment opportunities and that is directly related with poverty uh, elevation. More the employment opportunity, opportunities available, more people will be employed whether it is skill based or non-skill based, whatever it is, there are different schemes like Manrega etc. of the government which are providing certain kind of employment opportunities and in the present context they are providing the employment opportunities by competency mapping like what competen competency a particular uh, individual possesses based on that they are they are identifying the skill sets and they are identifying the jobs for them so employment opportunities uh, they are directly related with poverty alleviation now if you see the flow chart you will find that each and every activity or each and every area is interlinked in nature the other part is the empowerment Empowerment of women, empowerment of the downtrodden, empowerment of the tribals, 
uh, empowerment based on the caste system. So there are many issues related to it and we have discussed certain issues in self-help groups also where empowerment uh, was the major area. Then there are environmental awareness issues also protecting the environment, sustaining the environment, uh, providing the consciousness uh, about protection of environment or the ecosystem. Then there is another area which is related to healthcare. Now in healthcare, the awareness about the hygiene, the sanitation, uh, how to wash the hands, uh, and in the present context, hygiene matters all the more. So healthcare has become a very, very important issue, uh, a, a very important aspect in rural development. Then uh, there is infrastructure development also. Now in infrastructure, what all things would come like making the roads or building the roads uh, because in rural uh, areas like villages, you would still find the uh, we call them as kacha roads. There are still the roads which are not perfect in nature and it is very difficult to walk on such kind of roads. So that is one of the infrastructure development. Then you have the electricity part and then you have the providing electricity in every household and that has been the mandate of the government of India also. So these are certain aspects like building schools, uh, building health clinics, uh, etc. So these are the infrastructural development uh, areas which needs to be covered under rural development. Then one of the most important aspect which is uh, directly or indirectly related to each and every area which we have discussed is the education aspect. Now education is very very important because education is one way which provides a kind of set of skills to the individuals, then it provides, uh, it helps in poverty alleviation, it helps in awareness about health care, about health issues, about environmental issues and it provides empowerment. Education is one thing, if you have pen in your hand that is one of the most empowered uh, you are considered to be the most empowered person and you need to know how to read and write. So these things they help you uh, in employment also. So everything is related to each other. And so one aspect if it is touched upon automatically the other aspects are also covered. So this is, these are the areas where the rural development is required and these are the areas where the NGOs they try to pitch in. We'll, uh, I've just given a brief, now we'll discuss these in detail. So when we talk about the NG, role of NGOs in rural development, we need to understand why do we need the interference of NGOs or why do we need the NGOs to come into picture for the rural development. Can't the people residing in that particular area try to uplift themselves? Can't the government work for them? Can't the agencies, uh, the, uh, the sub-governmental agencies uh, located in those areas uh, like panchayats, etc., they help in rural development. So we need to understand why do we need the NGOs for playing a crucial role in the rural development. Now the first and foremost thing is that NGOs are quite flexible in their approach than any other organization. Now suppose for example, uh, if, the, if say there is a village A, now that village wants to uh, fix the road and build the road in a proper manner so that the commutation from the village to the town is easily or from the village to the schools or the health centers is easy. So in that case what they need to do is they need to take certain kinds of permission from the government and in that case the whole set of uh, bureaucratic files or file system has to be approved and by the time it reaches to the uh, village with approvals or without approvals. So that becomes quite difficult and the time span is very large. So in this case, the NGOs, they come into picture because they are quite flexible with their approach than any other organization and they have a reach in remote areas. That is very important. 
uh, the NGOs they are easily uh, able to easily connect with people as they intend to help them and they work in partnership with the government to resolve the problems at rural level. So when, when the person from the village is directly dealing with the government the things may be a little difficult uh, maybe because of uh, unawareness etc whatever the reason may be. So if the NGOs they come into picture uh, and they partner with the government to resolve the problems of the rural level. So village people or the rural people, they have an access to the government through somebody. So that is very important to understand. So that is why we need NGOs for rural development. Now what is the importance of NGOs in development? NGOs are very, very important. Uh, that we have understood and we have seen in earlier sessions also that NGOs have been very important. But the basic aspect here is that NGOs are providing certain kind of facilities indirectly, directly to the community on which it is working or a specific area on which it is working. For example, creating awareness. Creating awareness in what sense? creating awareness in health sector, creating awareness about education, creating awareness about different schemes of government which are beneficial for the rural population etc. The other aspect is they can easily undertake the projects in collaboration with the civic bodies and that these projects are actually meant for the rural people or for the rural development and as soon as the projects they take the projects they start implementing the project which helps the uh, rural masses then of course promoting social issues like uh, like there there are so many cases and if you, if you see the history of our country uh, there is uh, uh, RS Samaj movement came into picture that was kind of an NGO like uh, all the uh, their, the parity in the religions, uh, religious uh, uh, sanctity uh, so there are certain social issues like uh, child marriages uh, or uh, you can say killing of girl childs even in the fetus so these are certain social issues which needs uh, to be tackled and so need to be handled carefully and the awareness about these social issues uh, should be taken care of and NGOs they play, play a major role in promoting certain social causes which helps in abolishing such, such kind of uh, social issues which have negative impacts. Then there is technological assistance also like in present context. And the NGOs are playing a very very great uh, uh, beneficial role in reaching to the uh, rural masses for providing them technological assistance in form of different variants and here they become innovators also. So we will see that later. Then of course the legal assistance there are advocacy issues also and in that case NGOs play a major role for providing them the legal assistance also. Now these are the certain activities which have been undertaken by NGOs for rural development and these are the major activities and we have discussed most of the activities but I wanted to outline certain these activities so that they help you uh, in uh, re reminding what exactly the NGOs are meant for. The first one is promoting women empowerment. This has been a very, very uh, prominent issue, social issue in our country and NGOs have been playing a very great role in promoting women empowerment. And this is being done uh, especially in rural areas by creating self-help groups, by creating awareness on environment conservation, by developing the sanitization facilities, by promoting education for rural children uh, like building schools etc. Though every activity is based on the funds but they are uh, happening and they are helping the rural masses. 
then there are activities which have been undertaken by NGOs uh, for rural development uh, related to the medical campaigns and NGOs have been doing a very great job uh, in providing this kind of awareness in remote areas even they are going door to door to provide the awareness and for this the example of Anganwadi workers is very very popular where they go from door to door and provide awareness about the maternal health, uh, about the vaccinations and they even have the campaigns for say eye, eye operations etc. So they promote uh, caste equality also. They give legal aid to the rural poor because they cannot afford to have the legal aid. So NGOs pitch in and they try to they network with the legal offices and then they provide uh, the legal aid to the rural poor. Uh, the aid in development of agricultural facilities like irrigation, this is one just one example. Uh, and they act as mediators between government bodies and the rural people. Now in this case it is very important uh, to understand that what different roles are played by NGOs. Now this is one concept. There is another concept also which is based on this only. This is a broader concept and there you have a defined concept. So there are certain roles which have been played by NGOs like raising concerns on social issues. I had given you an example of uh, child marriages etc. So they help in highlighting the social issues in the villages, encourage people to speak about such issues because there are cases where the even now, even the literate people, they are uh, hesitant of speaking about certain social issues like mental health. People are not willing to speak about it. Then there are, there are um, uh, certain cases where NGOs pitch in to resolve issues at their level, at the, at the local level itself. Uh, NGOs help in establishing standards for social equality amongst the rural communities. That is very important. Then monitoring the accountability of government. This is one of the major aspects which is being played by NGOs. And NGOs have been doing a very good work in this area because they ensure that the government bodies do not overlook the needs of the villagers. They act as facilitators or catalysts between the rural poor people, specifically poor and civic bodies. Uh, they represent uh, backward communities in keeping their demands with the government. They perform social audit of work done by government and try to at present posted on social media sites. So like a movement starts and there are certain cases like right to education, right to disability act, all this has been done by NGOs where the policy has been made by, uh, the initiative has been taken by NGOs and then the government made these certain policies. Then there is encouraging empowerment like uh, taking activities to empower rural women, uh, aid in creating self-help groups, helping in empowerment of scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. It can be any caste based, it's like rural poor basically. And then undertaking recreational activities and awareness campaigns, campaigns to promote uh, equality. So all these are the roles played by NGOs. They help in infrastructural development in this way, organizing medical campaigns in remote areas, setting up the schools, helping the rural poor in managing their resources like water bodies and wildlife. Uh, in, in another session, we would be seeing certain case studies related to these issues and uh, it would be interesting to understand that how these NGOs, they are performing. Uh, promoting skill-based employment opportunities and help in setting up small business enterprise also for providing employment to the rural masses. Now we come to the another concept given by Farrington and et al. And in this they have described the role of NGOs in the following manner. NGOs as field testers, NGOs as joint partners, NGOs as innovators, NGOs as networkers, advocacy role of NGOs, NGOs role on empowerment. Most of them we have discussed but let us see how they have defined uh, these roles uh, given by NGOs. Now suppose NGOs act as field testers, what they do? 
it is the ability to build close interactive relationships with their clients uh, to develop their local knowledge to work with them in testing new technologies and methods for managing on and off farm resources which has become quite popular like rainwater har harvesting this is a kind of technology which needs to be uh, told to those uh, rural masses and how to work upon it this is just an example so it has also given rise to a widespread expectation that a division of roles in which government organizations develop technology and NGOs provide field testing local adaptation feedback and dissemination this is quite logical functional complementaries for example Mennonite Central Committee MCC crop trials and this uh, NGO is associated with field testing and it is situated in Bangladesh. Then there is professional assistance for development action that is Pradhan which is uh, located in India. And there is Institute for Social and Economic Research, Education and Information which is located in Indonesia which is acting as field testers for the rural masses. Then NGOs as joint partners. NGOs, they are employed to facilitate the organization of local groups capable of using available technology. So the relationship between NGO and government organization, they, it has usually worked quite well. For example, in Bangladesh, uh, Bangladesh Rural Development Committee has an experience with poultry production. Uh, even in Bangladesh, again, the pro shikshas, uh, it is working with livestock. Both are assisted in the formation uh, of local groups and the training of local staff. One of the few experiments uh, in partnering with the government ex uh, organizations is related to watershed projects in India and that has been done between uh, Mirta uh, MYRADA and Ryland Development Board of the Government of Karnataka. Now coming to another aspect of NGOs as innovators. NGOs they too innovate and in the present context if, we, if you just surf the net and just type NGOs as innovators you will find n number of NGOs who are working on COVID relief measures innovatively. So NGOs innovate too whether in technical, procedural, institutional or methodological ways in the expectations that the government will scale up or increase the size uh, of, of, their, uh, of their expectations. Uh, virtually innovativeness in all NGOs originates from direct experience in working with the local groups. Uh, it is therefore tailored to meet such specific requirements. For example, like landless women's need for backyard income generating activities, this has been met by Friends and Village Development Bangla in Bangladesh. Um, that NGO is located there and it has improved duck rearing programs. Uh, BRAC is one of the organization which is helping with the irrigation in Bangladesh and of course we talked about Mirada that is Mysore Resettlement Development Agency which is working in India. Magugmad Foundation Training that is working in Philippines, Ubanata Fisheries which is working in Thailand. So these are certain kinds of NGOs which are acting as innovators. NGOs as networkers. Uh, networking, what is networking? So this is important to understand what is networking. So networking may be defined as an interaction amongst a group of institutions in order to realize the anticipated benefits for themselves or for their clients. So there exists a general feeling that NGOs individually do the best but collectively very less. However, the network of NGOs is an evolution which is now showing encouraging and progressive signs at various levels. Over the years, some NGOs have made important achievement in promoting and strengthening the NGOs network and there are certain NGOs network we are where the NGOs they club in together and try to work with each other. These are some of the organization where NGOs act as networkers. Nepal Agroforestry Foundation NAF, Association of Voluntary Agencies in Rural Development India, 
voluntary actions network in india this is the one of the largest uh, networks uh, and uh, of ngos in india oroville reclamation reclamation this is also in india located in india international institute for rural reconstruction that is located in philippines so ngos do act as networkers then if we see the advantages for the ngos to have certain kind of networking so these are the some some of the advantages that the ngos are not isolated uh, networking ensures a protection for ngos themselves in situation when the government and other vested interests in the society pose a threat or make an assault on the voluntary organizations networking provides a mighty strength for ngos networks provide opportunities for interaction exchange of information dialogue joint action etc networks also create the possibility of individuals and organizations working on a similar issue with some or different perspective to come together advocacy role of ngos how the ngos they help in advocacy and what is advocacy we need to understand that first so advocacy means influencing policy in favor of the poor and powerless it can be understood as a deliberate organized and systematic effort to influence policy affecting the poor the marginalized the underprivileged and the disadvantaged uh, they have critically have to critically analyze whether the government policies are pro poor or not now if it is not pro poor then a certain kind of movement starts Uh, many ngos like disha development uh, initiative for social and human action amdavad Uh, has worked on certain policies with the center and the state such kind of ngos they act as facilitators uh, and the opponent or assembly parliament facilitators to the opponents uh, uh, in the government to raise appropriate questions and try to find out remedial action and i had given you an example of say right to disability act this started with the movement of such kind Uh, more uh, overt advocacy is evident, evident in pro shiksha's efforts to promote poverty focused social forestry actions in bangladesh forest department so these are the advocacy role of ngos now when we talk about ngos role on empowerment the term empower refers to giving power or authority to ngos in the process of development interventions and this enables the impoverished and downtrodden to gain power and authority over their livelihood this is achieved by organizing the unorganized sections of the society empowerment therefore is a process aimed at changing the nature and direction of systemic forces which marginalize dalits tribals women and other disadvantaged sections and empowerment approach is focused basically on the marginalized groups particularly the rural poor the women the landless and the oppressed dalits or the tribals some ngos like bhumi sena in maharashtra works with mar- ma- marginalized adivasis or tribals uh, seva in amdabad is a leading ngo based uh, in gujarat which has selected poor women working in the urban information sector as its target group then working women's forum a south india ngo encourages women's groups to design and manage their own projects and activities chipko movement uh, is uh, providing protection to trees in uttarakhand through the rural women to summarize the whole concept we can say that ngos play an important role in rural development the majority of activities which are related to uh, the ngos which uh, ngos deal with are agricultural programs health human resource development community development and of course industrial and trade programs like small scale enterprises the ngos do bring the awareness among the amongst the rural poor and are the major source for making the rural area develop so this is all about the role of ngos in rural development but you can always uh, uh, go to the website certain websites or we'll be discussing certain case studies in the next session uh, and in that in those case studies you can go to their uh, respective sites and try to find out how they are working for the rural development thank you so much